Hello everybody and welcome to exercise 2 on page 112 of the workbook. And in this problem we are talking about two different functions, little f and capital F. Let's just take a look at the difference between the two. So little f is the function whose graph is given here to the right and capital F is a function that's defined in terms of an integral, the integral from 0 to x of little f of t dt. And what they're asking us to do is to fill out the table below. Notice that the table has three different functions in it, capital F, capital F prime, and capital F double prime. Okay, so since we're talking about three different functions, how about if we take them one at a time, starting with the first row of our table, which is asking us for values of capital F. Okay, well, if we start with just the first x value, 1, that they want to plug in, let's just see what we would have to do to calculate that. So capital F, again, is defined up here. It's an integral. So capital F of 1, by definition, is the integral from 0 to 1 of little f of t dt. How do we calculate an integral? Well, remember that graphically, integrals have to do with areas. So this integral from 0 to 1 is really talking about the area under our curve little f. Let's shade that area together. So between 0 and 1, we're talking about this area right here. And the question is, how much area are we talking about? Well, in the picture, you might notice that each square is 1 by 1. So the part that I'm boxing in, that has an area of 1. And then there's an extra triangle also that has area 1 half. If you add those together, you come up with 1 and a half, and that should be the value of f of 1 here. Okay, and just to make a comment here, everything in this first row is going to have to do with integrals and is therefore going to be representing areas somehow on our original function. Okay, and then continuing over to f of 2, same idea. To get f of 2, we need to do an integral this time from 0 to 2. Okay, so that's just going to add a little bit of area to the, to the area that we already had between 0 and 1. So between 0 and 2, we need to add that little triangle. And that triangle is going to add an additional half a unit of area. So we're going to have the 1.5 that we already had plus that additional 1 half. That's going to give us 2 when we plug 2 in. Okay, we keep doing this. Okay, so moving on to x equals 3. Now we need to add on this little triangle of area down here. Notice that that's below the x-axis. And so we wind up subtracting 0.5 from the 2 that we already had. So 2 minus 0.5 brings us back down to 1.5 again for our value at 3. Okay, we just continue in this way all the way across. So we are ready for... 4 now. So if we integrate from 0 to 4, we're going to throw in this extra bit of area. It's below the axis again, and it has an area of 1. So we're going to take the 1.5 that we had before and subtract 1 from it. That's going to take us down to 0.5. And then finally, when we, when we substitute 5 in, the area that we need to subtract is not so nice this time. Okay, if you look over here in our, on our graph between 4 and 5, that's sort of a strange shaped region. So to do that, it helped me to split it into two pieces. I'm going to draw a horizontal line here. There's this rectangle, which is half of a square unit. And then there's this little triangle, which is half of that half or a quarter. And so that green area that I just shaded all together is actually 3 quarters, 0 0.75 of a unit. And so when we go over here, we need to take that 0.5 and subtract 0.75 from it, which is going to bring us down to minus 0.25. That's the value of capital F of 5. Okay, and so we have completed the first row of our table here. Let's erase some of the circling that we did. And we are ready then to move on to the second row of the table, which asks us for values of capital F prime of x. Well, how do we calculate those? Let's remind ourselves of what the definition of capital F was. It was an integral. So if we want to know what capital F prime of x is, we can just take this equation that we wrote to the left and just take the derivative of both sides. So 
So on the left, we're going to get capital F prime of x, and over on the right, we're going to have to take the derivative of that integral. My question to you is, what happens when you take the derivative of an integral like that? Well, the second fundamental theorem of calculus said that the derivative and the integral cancel in a situation like this, and what we wind up with is just f of x. What's interesting about that is that f of x just gives us y values, output values, on the function whose graph we were given. Okay, so in words, we could think of every number in the second row of our table as just representing y values of the function little f. All right, so let's go back to our picture. I'm going to just get rid of some of the shading that we did. Okay, and if we want to know what capital F prime of 1 is, that's just like asking you for the y value of the function little f, that number right there. And you can see that that number is y equals 1. Okay, and f of 2, similarly, we're just looking for the y value when we substitute 2 in, that's going to be 0. And we just keep going. We substitute 3 in, we're going to get negative 1. 4 in, we're also going to get negative 1. And then finally, 5 looks like it's negative a half. Okay, so there are our values for capital F prime of x. Okay, and finally, we are ready for the third row of the table, capital F double prime of x. How would we find values for that function? Okay, well, let's start with the equation that we came up with from the previous step, the fact that capital F prime of x is equal to little f of x. If we take the derivative of both sides of this equation one more time, we're going to get capital F double prime on the left, and on the right we're going to get just little f prime. And the question is, what does little f prime represent graphically? Here we have to think back to the first part of the course. The derivative of little f represents slopes. Okay, the slope of the tangent line. So when we look at the third row in the table, we want to think slopes of the graph of little f. All right, so let's go back to our picture, see if we can figure that out. I'm going to go ahead and erase some of the stuff that we did at the last step. And if we start again at the value x equals 1 and ask, what would, what would we get if we plugged it into f double prime? That's talking about the slope of the graph of little f at x, at x equals 1. Notice that that point happens to lie on the straight line right here. What is, the, what is the slope of that line that we're looking at? Well, if you pick another point, you might notice that the rise over the run, we're going down 1 and over 1. So the slope at that point must be negative 1. That's got to be the value of f double prime of 1. Okay, then we would move on to the next point right here at 2, what is the slope of the graph there? Well, we're still on the same line at that point, and so the slope is still negative 1. That hasn't changed, so we're going to get negative 1 when we substitute 2 in. Now we're ready to move on to 3, the point right here. What is the slope of the graph little f at that point? Well, you might remember we said something about a point like that way back earlier in the course. We called that a sharp corner, or a cusp of the graph. And we talked about how, at a point like that, the derivative doesn't exist. So what that means, then, the slope doesn't exist. That means our second derivative of capital F doesn't exist there either. Okay, and if you think about it, moving over to the number 4, we've got the same is issue. That's also a sharp corner, which means the value of this function is also not going to exist. Okay, and then finally, we've just got one number to go. If we substitute 5 in there. We're looking at that point. What is the slope of our graph at 5? Well, at 5, we're on this line segment. What would the rise over the run for that be? If we pick a couple of points. You can see we're going to go up 1 and over 2, which means that our slope is actually 1 over 2. And that's going to give us a value of 0.5. Okay, and I believe we have completed our table.